Hello and welcome to day five of the Games here in Tokyo 2020 as we prepare for the second and final day of team action in Paralympic dressage. We've seen three of the grades ride and grade four and grade five will ride today that will conclude the 15 teams challenge for those all important medals. Baji Cohen out to the west of the city. Still quite warm and humid out here, but the uh, sessions all taking place at the beginning and on into the evening Tokyo time to give the best possible conditions for athletes, both human and equine. Our horses are our partners in sport and, of course, the only Olympic and Paralympic discipline that includes that second athlete, that animal athlete. Fantastic legacy venue here, originally built for the 1964 Games and massively refurbished for these 2020 Games. And the field of play tonight set up with a 20 by 60 meter arena for them to ride their team tests. Once again, it's a set test. It's different to the individual tests that contributed to those uh, medals earlier on in the session. These team tests then, once again, ridden for each grade and are grading from one to five is for based on the rider's comparative ability based on the disabilities and impairments and this is a sport for riders with disabilities impairment vision impairments and really interesting to see the number of compensating aids that the riders have been using to help their sport uh, and how good a performance we are seeing from these athletes at the Paralympic level. We are absolutely in tune with the rest of the Paralympic Games ethos because this sport is being judged purely on the quality of the sport being delivered. We're not judging the disability. We're not really judging the athlete. We're judging the athlete's ability to produce dressage in exactly the same way that the dressage judges were assessing the quality of the horse's work in the Olympic Games here just a couple of weeks ago. Grade four and grade five are the grades that uh, conclude the team session. The nations have, uh, in the main, they have four athletes at the games. They've all then, after the individual, selected three athletes who will participate in the team. And grade five is our uh, first grade of the day here on day five of the games. We've got a uh, cadre of five judges as well arrayed around the ring. You can see them at their various positions. We're actually looking from the president's position there at C and seeing the judges halfway along the long side at B and E. Those letters indicating where the movements must be ridden and performed. Amelia White for Australia will be our first in the ring. Then Tamsin Addison, the final rider for Ireland. Regine Mispelkamp for Germany. We're going to have Frank Husma, medalist here the other night. Michel Georges, Sophie Wells, all medalists in grade five in the individual. And Natalia Marchinova goes in that section as well. Of our eight athletes from grade five who've been selected to be part of their nation's teams. So Australia gets us back underway. Amelia White is going to be our first in the ring with Genius. She finished top eight in her grade, so she will also be riding in the freestyle coming up on day six of the games. Amelia with Genius. Amelia, who has an acquired disability, having been involved in a car accident, which caused permanent injuries to her legs, upper body and spine. That was back in 2010. Shortly after taking up power dressage, then she moved to Germany, a real center for horse sports and in particular dressage. And she said it was really eye opening to go to somewhere with such a focus on dressage, having grown up in in particular eventing. She trained with Megan Jones in Australia. So Amelia White and Genius, our first grade five team test rider. As Amelia completes the first halt, 
moving off into collected trot. And the pace is being asked for here in this test, collected medium and extended. These grade five riders, riders with the least physical impairments. It's around to complete the 10 meter circle. Into a shoulder in, so the horse here on three tracks. So that's the, the lines that you would see looking forwards towards a horse of which lines the horse is on. So one leg on one line, a pair on the next line and the other single one, so three lines. A half pass here. And that movement alone, double marks. Again, just a super athletic collected trot into the halt immobility. Four steps required from the judge. And again, double marks for that one single movement. The test and mirror image are here onto the right circle. The judge is looking for evenness of steps, balance, rhythm. Again, super shoulder in there. The angle of the horse, just at about 30 degrees. And then the half pass, maybe the quarter just in there, correction there. Back to the shoulder leading. Really good crossing. And again, the rider's able to use different types of reins if they feel they need loops in their reins for their fingers. And Amelia here using the rising trot to create some more momentum here in this medium trot. And the transitions alone at H and B there, earning 10 marks just on their own. So it's really important to get those transitions as good as you possibly can. Yes, it's worth noting that the set test there will be a variety of lengths of movement. So some movements will be for very short moments in the ring. Others will be for great long periods of hard work like the serpentine, but marked out of 10. And the athletes working with their coaches will have been so focused on where those marks begin and end because if they do end up having a problem, they'll want to know where does my next mark start? Where do I start riding for my next 10? Sending a good pick up there from the extended walk to the collected walk. And again, just this series of movements here across the centre line with these pirouettes. Again, a double marking coefficient. And here the rider's being asked for the half pirouette, not the turn on the haunches that will be seen in grades one through to four. So again, a tighter circle, more the size, ideally the size of your dinner plate. And a lovely transition up into the collector counter. Again, the judge is looking at the harmony of the horse and the rider. They are not judging the rider's physical impairment. It is just the test, the movements themselves. And again, a good forward medium counter, whilst lengthening his frame and stride. And here, this into the counter counter. So this is a true test of balance of the horse, cantering on the opposite leg to the direction it's moving. And here, looking for the simple change. So good, clear steps of walk and direct from a canter to a walk and then up into the counter. And again, just a beautiful impression here. The horse's pole, which is the point between its ears, point and that the extended counter so that's the the full extent of the counter the judge is wanting to see a lengthening of frame and to get the higher marks you really need to be bold in that gonna cross the diagonal line and I into the half 20 meter counter counter circle again good balance good rhythm good jump to the counter here, just setting up for a lovely simple change. They're good, clear steps of walk. A 
And again, the music that you have accompanying the horse, the riders can choose their own music, they bring their own music with them, but it's to enhance the test. It's not actually being judged. It's just to enhance maybe the audience's view of it to make it more interesting. And then the transitions back to the collected trot from the extended trot onto the center line. Judge is looking for straightness into that halt. The horse just settling itself. And the grade fives have to come all the way down to that halfway marker. A lot of the para tests would uh, turn a half circle onto that center line and give them a halt. But the judges here looking for the riders to have that control and straightness at the end of the test for their horse to come well down into that final halt. Amelia White and Genius, just the second rider we see for the Australian team. Amelia on 69.2 in the individual. We'll see whether she can uh, go through that barrier here today. She'd love to get over 70%, and uh, we've seen quite a few horse and rider combinations find that their second day in the ring just brings a little bit of improvement because of the familiarity. Adam, these uh, grade five horses have had a couple of days sort of just with training and not being in the main arena. And from here, they'll probably head to the calling tents. I'm really happy with that test she is, and overall, just a, a lovely, super harmonious picture. And that's what she wanted to see, 70.5 here today. That, after two riders, puts Australia on 138.581. One more rider to go for Australia. That will be grade four rider Sharon Jarvis in today's session. We're still predicting a uh, result maybe outside the top dozen of our 15 teams for Australia. But they'll get a little bit of a boost there from Amelia White, probably finishing about 1% better than our original prediction. The whole Irish team makes their Paralympic debut at these games. They are a team that got a great boost off Michael Murphy yesterday, who found his form, having been disappointed in the individual, to finish well over 70% yesterday. And now it's the turn of Tamsin Addison. Tamsin with Fahrenheit. Tamsin scored 66% in her individual test which unfortunately meant she misses out on a place in the freestyle. She was a freestyle finalist at her championship debut, the Europeans in Rotterdam in 2019. Tamsin moving on very straight there on the center line, tracking the left. And again, a lot of the grade five riders won't be using very many adaptations on their tack. The only thing we'll see here with Tamsin is the uh, little stops on the rain, again, will just help her keep her grip there. She comes into that shoulder in. Again, judges looking for the fluidity, the rhythm, the tempo. Get into that half temperature circle, to the half pass. Nice, even steps across. Super frame, the horse just checking in with the rider in hand, and as you see his ears sort of flick back. Almost straight, not quite. Good steps back, good clear diagonal steps. As I say, into the mirror image again now, the 10 meter circle. It's really interesting how, even without the reference of the ring around you, looking pretty much from the president's position, we were able to see that the halt wasn't quite straight. And I can assure you these dressage judges' eyes are even better than, than us here, so they are not missing anything. And it's all these little details. I mean, we are watching Paralympic level dressage. They're all good, but we're just trying to reinforce where the ranking is gonna come in. The judges have the best job in sport watching these tests. And again, as she comes in to set him up for the medium trot. So not the full extent of the trot shown here because they must have a clear difference between this medium one and the full extended 
a little bit later on, but a different shown there. Maybe could have come back a little bit more, shown a bit more difference for the higher marks. And then the transitions again. Transitions, transitions, transitions. And again, just stretching into the extended walk. So the rider's just giving the reins, just letting the horse stretch out, not losing, not the full free walk where the horse would stretch right down, but just giving him a nice length of lane, letting him stretch the neck, the back. Judge is looking for a swinging, marching walk. So Tamsin, who studied for a PhD in sports psychology at Queen's University in Belfast, was diagnosed with bone cancer in her right arm at the age of 21, having been uh, an able-bodied eventer. She underwent operations to remove a significant amount of bone, and during her recovery, she underwent a process to help the humerus bone in her arm regenerate. She's actually the first person in the world to have regenerated a bone. In the walk here, you just see some tension creeping in, the rhythm not consistent, the horse just anticipating the movements coming up. The judges will be looking for a, a, a clear, direct transition from the walk to the counter the sort of top marks. Again, into the medium counter. Again, looking for those transitions at the markers. Again, remember the judges judging the quality of the work they see. This is nothing about physical impairment. And again, changing the diagonal onto the counter counter looking for the balance, looking for the frame to stay the same, the rhythm to stay the same. And clear steps in the walk. And as a reminder, that simple change, so that strides the counter down to two steps of walk into the counter, that's worth 10 marks alone. Very straight here, very forwards. Okay, maybe the horse just dropping down a little bit. But Tamsin will soon pick him up. Ready for this counter counter again. So where the, the outside leg is still leading. Often horses who've done high-level dressers will want to look to change here if the rider's balance changes slightly. So again, the judges testing the riders at each each point. And again, they'll be really looking for straightness because one of the, the key points of riding in counter-canter on a straight line is that you are straight because a way of making it easier is to ride a little bit with, with the shoulders towards the direction of balance. So to get your nines and tens in counter canter, when you are riding straight, you need to be truly straight. Just completing the extended trot. And again, the judge is wanting to see a real lengthening of frame. The horse at its maximum sort of stretch, it's still in rhythm. And again, to gain the higher marks out, just sort of like that hind leg to come through to stand up square. Still looked like a good test for Tamsin Addison and Fahrenheit. It is very, very nip and tuck between Australia and Ireland. As things stand, they both are predicted to finish up on 2.08 total team score. And we will know Ireland's final team score in a moment because Tamsin is their third and final rider. We saw Michael Murphy and Kate Kerhoran yesterday. There are just some of the highlights. Concentration on Tamsin's face. And again, the lovely angle in the shoulder in. And there you see the reins with the tab, so she can just keep hold of the reins, keep the contact that little bit better. So standing by for the score for the final team rider for Ireland to see where they end up on our leaderboard. It is 66.2 for Tamsin Addison, so that is going to keep uh, Ireland on pretty much what we predicted. We thought just low 208s, so it's going to be 207.153. 
And that, in the final analysis, is liable to be overtaken by Australia. On we go to Germany. We saw just one German rider yesterday, so this will start to put some shape to their team campaign. Certainly one of the teams we predicted to be in the top half dozen. And all of those top teams very, very close together. It just takes one or two good tests to suddenly propel them up onto the podium. Regine Mispelkamp is the first German rider we see today. Regine with Highlander Delights. Fourth, just missing out on the individual medals in the test earlier on in the games on a 73.1. And entering in a very expressive trot, very active. Just a slight sort of shifting of the horse to the left of the quarters as he came in. Began super straight there. So Regine, who's a qualified trainer with the German Olympic Sports Federation, has trained dressage and show jumping riders and is a judge in those disciplines as well. Rides as a grade five as a result of multiple sclerosis. And again, lovely active trot in. I think having done some judging, she'll know exactly what the judges are looking for, where she's going to gain her extra marks. Accuracy, always the key. Super crossing there. Could maybe have a little bit more bend in the direction she's going, but again, just super there. Straight on the center line. It's almost squaring up. And again, clear steps back. Just slightly coming into her left leg there as she moves off. Again then, preparing for this 10 meter circle. Again, all of this in collected trot. So the judge is looking for the regularity and quality of the trot. To the shoulder and just touching the board zone. Of course, that can sometimes put the horse off slightly with the rhythm in that, but quickly picked back up. So if you're just looking at this horse, you might think, oh, it, you know, it's very warm. And there's no doubt that even overcast as it is today in Japan, it is quite warm. But what a lot of the riders have been doing in both games is actually putting their horses into the misting tent before they come onto the field of play. But that doesn't work for everyone, and particularly Deb, you were telling me in, in para dressage that might not work for a rider because they can't afford to get wet because it would affect them. That's it. Some of the riders um, would find that just they just lose the contact slightly with the saddle. It, it doesn't quite suit them. And also the heat for, say, multiple sclerosis, um, people with multiple sclerosis, that works for them and their muscles and everything. But for someone that maybe has a bit of hypermobility, hyperflexibility in their joints, then the heat can make them a little bit more lax. So they lose their muscle tone. So it affects riders in different ways and they'll have, they'll have worked out their own ways of, of dealing with that. But again, just there, the extended walk coming back. Good transition back and now collecting for these pirouettes, the half pirouettes. Judge is looking for good four beat rhythm coming in and the horse to step each beat much lift up place down, describing that little circle. Again, very clear, set up, stepping around. Just stuck, that hind leg just stuck and spun slightly. But because again, what the judges are looking for, and, and it's quite easy for you, for you to see even at home, they're just looking for the walk to remain the same. Even when you're riding in half pirouette, it's still based on the walk, so they're looking for it to remain the same. A lovely medium counter there. You can just see the lengthening of the strides and transition back. And again, maybe if your horse doesn't have so much lengthening, you all have to remember that towards the end of the test, you've got to show even more lengthening. So you want to make sure that you keep enough in there to show a difference later. She comes into this counter counter. And the horses can have a little bit of a, a little bend to the outside leg, necessarily almost straight. 
super transition there. And again, remember that's worth double marks, just that transition alone. And again, the quality of these horses, I know the vets here are quite sort of astounded at, you know, what, what sort of horses our para riders are capable of, of riding and how it's changed over the years. Yeah, in a way that, you know, it, it's the Paralympic stage because we have support staff, we have venue staff who maybe only see the Paralympic horses come to us every four years. Um, that particular vet, Chris Elliott from Australia, has been here as an employed vet running the veterinary services for both games. And, you know, he would probably only see these horses once every two, four years. So he really just is able to take in his mind those slices of time and see these horses as just exponentially beyond the first cadre of horses that we would have had at Athens in 2004. And again, remember the judge looking for the harmony. Oh, just a shame there. Just lost the balance, but she has time to get him back. Again, show some good extended trot strides. It's always a judgment as to how much you're going to push your horse for that. Again, here the judge looking for the straightness. Look at that super expressive trot into the halt. So German team rider, Regine Misfilkamp will get the second score on the board for Germany. It was 73 for her in the individual, whether just that break in the last major diagonal for the extended trot will count against her a little bit too much. And might just keep the lid on Germany's attempt to jump up towards the podium out of the top six. I'd say in non-disabled sport at championship level, you wouldn't be allowed to carry a stick, but at all of our para championships, riders can carry a stick. It's only if you wish to use two that you must have special dispensation. And that's often sort of rare for the grade fives. I think I'd give that walk a 10. That was a, a free walk <laughs> and how often, in a test. <laughs> how often is that the case, that they come out on the most beautiful walks and when you want it in the test, you can't get it? They're just waiting for that score. Germany with only one score on the board at the moment, which was a 72-5 yesterday from Heidemarie Dressing. The judges at the moment, having seen the 30 ridden movements, have four further marks to give, what we call collective marks. And there we are, Regine scores 71 today, 71-0-7-0. And I think that is going to have a little bit of a downward trend on the German team total when we get all the way there. But it's 1-4-3 after two riders. Well, now a combination that will complete their team score. And it will be the team score for Italy, a team that includes Sara Morganti, the bronze medalist in grade one. This is their grade five rider, Federica Cilioni and Burberry. Now, Federica was actually born without a left forearm as a result of agenesis. So you'll see that she rides in a prosthetic. Federica scored 69% for ninth place, just missing out on the freestyle as an individual. But can she score 69 or even better, go over 70% today to conclude Italy's team total? Frederica here choosing very upbeat music, matching the horse's stride here. And again, remember the music is just an accompaniment in this team test to music, it's not being judged. Just a little bit of variation in angle there as she set off in that shoulder in. Again, back into the rhythm. And there you see the crossing in the half pass. And again, Frederica opting to ride with the prosthetic. You'll see other riders who opt to ride without and they'll maybe loop the reins around an elbow or they'll have other special adaptations 
to ride with that. But, but having the prosthetic, your reins are at least at the same sort of length, so you can make, you have to make less adjustments in a sense for the contact with the horse's mouth. And just some loss of balance there. Better, more rhythmical in this shoulder in this way. And then into this half pass. There we go, some really super crossing. The judges looking for the rhythm, the regularity. I think we perhaps mentioned earlier on in the games as well, how here at the Paralympic Games, there is and has been since Seoul in 1988, a single company providing a technical repair service center with repair and maintenance services for prosthetics, wheelchairs and other equipment during the games. And again, it's so easy because these riders know that to get the good marks, they have to really ride those extensions forward. And that always just is pushing the envelope to a break into the next pace up the canter. That's it, but it's always, I think in the back of your mind, you have to remember that it, it is only 10 marks. It is only one movement in the test affected. And then you've got to just put that behind you, just move on to the next movements. It's no good staying in there and keep thinking about what may not have gone wrong. But a good stretch there, the horse overstepping from the hind foot over the footprints of the front feet. And actually, in that particular medium trot as well, it's worth cons remembering that there is a separate mark for the transition. So if you can get back out of your break into canter and ride a good downward transition from medium back to trot, you've clearly ridden quite a good positive upward transition because it ended up going right the way through the top of trot into canter. But that's a, a nice way for the judges to encourage uh, riding forward through the transition and trying to produce a good big medium. Just anticipation there. So that will also come into the marks at the end, uh, the 10 marks that count for submission. And submission is more like a willingness of the horse to sort of carry out the work. There in that medium counter. Again, the transition shown back. And again, the judges not taking account of the music in this one. It's just purely as an accompaniment. She comes into the counter counter. Again, looking to keep the same balance, the same rhythm. It's a good jump in the counter there. Just a little bit of imbalance coming down. Good transition upwards. And again, in the frame of the horse, the judges even more at this grade looking for this to be exactly as they're looking for for non-disabled sports. So the pole, the point between the horse's ears, always to be the highest point. Again, looking for the smoothness, the harmony. Good across here, the rhythm really clear, good. Maybe a little bit loss of jump there coming through on the circle. Into that simple change. And again, that's potentially just the horse seeking the more natural balance of the inside leading leg canter. Some of the transitions maybe not as crisp as they could be, but again, that's only just marginally. And again, into this extended trot. Just coming back then, more of a gradual collection happening there, but a super harmonious testing. And I know we had the little sort of blip, but overall it's good harmony. And look at that for a nice square halt, really good square halt. Final team rider for Italy. And if she can replicate or go beyond her 69%, there's a very good chance that uh, Italy could hold on to a place inside the top six when we get to the end of this team championship, which would be a great result for them.
And I can just say on the shoulder, and you can just see the angle there. The judge is wanting to see. And there's a turn on to the center line. And again, a good expressive trot. And there you have a good clear view of the, the loops that she's using to assist, just keeping the contact. The battle for gold will be this evening as we now turn to the second of the riders in the team for the Netherlands. The Netherlands, of course, and again, what's quite interesting about this, and I'm sure it's the same across the games, is how Federica has only had one arm since birth. Other riders have had to adapt to that coming in later in their life. Federica and Burberry score 65.9, so it's not quite what Italy were hoping for. It's going to be a 2-1-4 total, and that probably takes away their opportunity to go into the top six, but they are our leading score at the moment of those four teams that have now completed all three riders. You see there, a couple of teams we've only seen one rider from, Netherlands and Belgium, but we're about to see both of those nations, one after the other, in this grade five. And here is the Dutch medalist, Frank Hosma. Individual and freestyle medalist in the London and Rio games. Frank also took individual bronze with us here in the grade five earlier on these games on a score of 73.4. And the Netherlands need 73 or more from him to continue challenging Great Britain. Frank Hosma, Alphaville. I remember many of these grade four, well, certainly the grade five riders would be out competing at the highest level in non-disabled sports, sort of out at Intermediaire, Grand Prix. So really highly collected work here. As he completes 10 meter circle into the shoulder in. And again, the judges, when they set these tests, each movement is a progression into the next, is to lead the horse and the rider in correctly into the next movement. Again, super rhythm and expression there. Almost wonder if they were going to go into passage there. The halt. Not quite a square. No, and that's, could be. that's the sort of detail that really surprises you because Dutch dressage riders in either code are so detail orientated. And you have to be to, to gain those extra marks, to make those little point differences. That's where it can be made up, well, made or lost. Again, super angle here. You can really see that three tracks. We have that right forefoot in off the track. We have the left hind foot right out by the boards, and then you create a diagonal of the other two. And again, the forehand leading, the shoulder leading, good crossing. And again, those half passes worth double marks. We come into the medium trot. And again, these transitions, the transitions are H and P super transition there, they're worth, they have their own 10 marks. Again, now just setting up for the extended walk. The judge is looking again at the regularity, the suppleness of the back and the activity of the walk, the over track. Is there a change in over track? So the hind feet stepping over the hoof prints of the fore feet. And looking at that four beat rhythm. So Frank, who had a, an accident in 1997, he fell down some stairs and through a glass window, ended up severing tendons, nerves and muscles in his right arm 
and as a result, he has then always had limited function in his right hand. And again, good steps there. A nice, small, rhythmical circle. The hind feet picking up and setting down individually. There we go, very good. And looking for this counter transition on the center line. And again, as we say, the judge is looking to see the pole, the point between the horse's ears there is the highest point, the front of the face on a vertical line. It comes into this medium. Again, very straight there. Picking up marks with all of these sort of good points. Judges, when you come to change the rain and the bend, looking for no difference in the rhythm, no difference in the frame. And again, just super harmony. These are very, very experienced campaigners. Just a little bit of tension creeping in there, but again, a super transition up. making full use of the corners. See how deep he goes in. And again, give me a very expressive extended counter there. As we say, the tests are mirror image from one rain to the other. Super balance. The horse, you see the ears just back slightly, just listening to the rider. There, this simple change, much better than the one to the left. We say simple change covers an awful lot. It requires a direct downward transition from canter to walk. It requires those couple of quality walk steps and then a direct upward transition from walk to canter again. The super balance and rhythm there. And you see at the beginning, Frank just setting the horse back a little, making more notice of the transition. Big smiles on his face. And showing the straightness settling into the halt. Alphaville has been an incredible partner to Frank Hosmar over many, many championships. Have they done enough today to maybe move the Netherlands into the driving seat of these games to try and break Great Britain's unbeaten run? But you know, when you've had a test like that, you come out feeling, doesn't matter what the judges say, you know you've done your best, you know you've put everything into that. I can just see the expression there, the concentration on horse and rider's face. Great celebrations from Frank Osma. On his own assessment of his test, let's see how he reacts to the judge's assessment of his test in just a moment. Dan Prain of France, the judge there at B. Just exchanging a nod with Frank as he rides out. Score of 74. 74023. Going to put the Dutch on 150.2 at the moment. So that puts them behind Great Britain, the United States, and Denmark. And in fourth of those riders. Of Very those interesting to see where that is going to put the Netherlands in terms of predictions. As we've now seen two riders from each of the USA, Great Britain and the Netherlands. It still keeps them in silver, but it is incredibly close. 
gold medalist in grade five here earlier these games, flag bearer for her nation in the opening ceremony, Michelle Georges, best of eight, hoping to replicate the 76% score here in Tokyo that gave her that individual gold. We'll just clip the boards there. Let's see if they come to pop that back up or not. That 10 meter circle. Setting up for the shoulder in. Get a little bit of variation and angle there. Into the half circle. And the half pass. Showing the crossing there. this center line a little bit of a, a sharp halt yeah, it just came back. up a bit sudden it was wasn't it but just and i think it'll settle in and i think she's managing it but there's just a couple of clues that suggest that Michelle maybe has thought, maybe I won't warm up quite so much, and she's just suddenly found that she's got a little bit more horse in her hand than she was expecting. The way they had that sudden halt, the way the horse just was a bit loose behind, it actually knocked over that one board, and then very quickly again, coming down the long side, actually tapped another board. And again, the quarter's just lagging. They're just little things. Don't forget these horses they would have had training for two days in between the competitions, but it's not getting out in the arena here. And again, maybe just not quite as fluent as in the individual test. Then we go back into rhythm there. That medium trot, the good transition back. Almost just had a lot of attention forwards. Not necessarily with his rider there. There's a decent amount of score to play with. I mean, this horse is consistently delivering high technical quality of, of movements. You know, that was what totted up to 76% the other day. So again, we're looking at things chipping away at that, but not massive errors that are going to result in 3 4%, except if you just see lots and lots of little chip aways. I mean, she is a super mare, but just, I say, just the concentration a little bit there. Back, back with Michelle again now. Ears just flickering back, concentrating on her rider. It's good steps, but just not quite coming out of it in rhythm. Getting better rhythm here again as she sets up for the pirouette to the right. And the transition there into the collector counter. Just a little glance there into the board there. <laughs> That's been knocked over. You could just see the eye going there. The horse to the medium counter. Beautifully straight. Just where you can set the shoulder just slightly in so you keep your straightness. Oh, very acceptable. Again, let's see how we do here on the balance as we come around to do this counter counter half 20 meter circle looking to keep the same rhythm the same tempo and gather up ready for that simple change super and again this is where she'll be picking up the marks because again that transition down the walk the transition up with double coefficients And seeing how she keeps the straightness, just setting that the neck just a slight little bend. Again, harmony here, rhythm, good rhythm. Good jump in the counter. Again, 
this simple check. Oops, that's really unfortunate. Poor horse. Yeah, just stumble. There we go. Back into the rhythm again. Just lost her footing. It did very well to pick Bucket. She did. She came up, straight yeah. back up. Absolutely. Again, looking for this extended counter. How much will she go for it, knowing there's been a little bit of inattentional places. The safe option, really good. Showing good balance. She comes in on this straight line to the halt. Again, just a little abrupt. Mm. Michelle Georges and best of eight. Is she going to be able to replicate that 76%? That delivered individual gold in grade five here earlier on in these games. Michelle, who was making her way through the mix zone, giving interviews to broadcasters and media when she was handed her mobile phone and she was like, I can't take it now, I'm being interviewed. And they said, no, you do need to take it. It's the king of Belgium. And again, I think the only sort of additional aid that you can, com well, not compensate aid really, but the only additional thing you're allowed there is the um, the strap on the saddle. On the front of the saddle there, if she felt she needed that, then she has that. But otherwise, no additional compensating aids. Yeah, Michelle has paralysis in her left leg, having been kicked by a foal um, at her horse farm a few years ago. So she could just find herself suddenly, you know, see how dynamic the horses are. She could just find herself being put a little bit out of balance over to that side. So that's why she has that compensating aid just as a backup if she needs it. Best of eight saying hello to our cameraman. 77.093. That is great news for Belgium because that is not error free for Michelle and 77 having one gold on 76. 149 for Belgium. Oh, and very spooky mare tonight. She really is. But it really does show what an upward trend we maybe have from that combination. What are they going to score in freestyle on day six? But that's a useful score for Belgium. Keeps them very much in the mix as one of our top four or five teams. Russian Paralympic Committee athlete from grade five goes next. This is Quinta and Natalia Marcianova. Natalia is going to be the final RPC rider for their team challenge. Again, another very expressive, active moving horse. And para riders sourcing horses from exactly the same areas that uh, open sports people are sourcing. So all we're looking for is a superb temperament to go with these athletic abilities there in the shoulder in. Again, the judge is looking for the rhythm accuracy, the harmony. And again, the music not being judged in this team test to music. To the halt, not quite settling. And the steps back. Not picking up so much, but still clear steps. Natalia who finished top five in the individual, so we'll see her in the freestyle as well. She scored 71.4 earlier in the games. These are her first games. Natalia, who had a horse fall during training back in 2011, fractured the temporal bones in her skull, which meant she sustained a brain contusion and has come right the way back. She had to learn how to walk and talk again after that accident. And now she's here classified amongst our least impaired athletes as grade five. 
And from that angle, hard to see if the horse was parallel or anything leading, but again, it just looked very good from, I thought we could see, into the medium trot. Very expressive. And again, I think it shows from Michelle's test that just one movement can be affected and you can still come back with this kind of thing. So it's really important to know where you're earning your marks and where your double coefficients are. Really lovely stretch from the horse here in this extended walk. The neck and the head reaching down lower than the height of the horse's back. Judges will be looking for maximum over track in that walk, so the hind feet stepping over the imprints of the front feet. Again, in this series of movements here, with the walk pirouette, with double marks, really neat pirouette there. Again, always nice if you can match them both up to the same size. Again, good size, good shape. A little late in that transition to pick up the best marks you want to be on the centre line. But again, if your horse is not going to go off in good balance, then maybe you are. It is worth taking that extra step. Again, keeping the straightness there. across the centre line. And a lot of these horses, again, horses can anticipate. They've done a lot of, they're a horse that loves the changes, flying changing things, and you can be fighting with anticipation there. Showing good balance and waiting. There's a little tension there in that simple change. The step's quite short. Judges ideally would like to see a little bit more length in that walk step. She comes into the medium. Sorry, the extended here. Showing the greatest difference possible. And again, the music, just an accompaniment. It's not being judged. this test of balance. Just losing the tempo slightly, they're just changing slightly. She came around. And again, you can just see the tension there and that's it, the transition sort of lost. And of course that transition, it's a double mark there, so she will have lost a little bit there, but looking to gain in other places. Setting up for the extended trot. And again, just super balance and rhythm there. And clear definitions at both markers. She comes into that halt, almost square. RPC athlete Natalia Marshanova and Quinta. Can they replicate or improve on the 71% score that they got in the individual? A couple of marks upwards could move RPC into the top 10 in the final result. Yeah, in our grade five riders, um, it's only a mild physical impairment they would have. It's either in the movement or muscle strength or a deficiency of one limb. Or, or a mild deficiency in two limbs. So that's the defining cr criteria for these riders. And very rarely would it involve the spine. So if they end up overtaking Canada's team total of 211.6, 
They are very, very likely to end up inside our eventual top 10. So just going to get this RPC score before we welcome forward our final rider in grade five. One more grade to go, another eight athletes before we know which direction the team medals are going here this evening in Bajiko in Equestrian Park. And 71.326 for the final RPC rider. So pretty much on their individual score. And it's 208.303 for Russia. The Russian Paralympic Committee will sit third best of our teams at the moment. And that is possibly going to end up outside the top 10 of teams. British team onto the kiss and cry to support their final rider. Britain, if Sophie Wells can uh, replicate her 74.4 from the individual when she won a silver medal, Britain have maybe 1% advantage over the Netherlands. So what they really want is for Sophie to pull something big out of the bag today to try and carry on their unbeaten run as team champions. The individual and freestyle medalist from the Rio Games, one individual in freestyle medals in London as well on her Paralympic debut. That's a very expressive horse, quite sensitive. And Sophie with the amniotic band syndrome from birth affects all four limbs and only has five fingers in total between those two hands. So she'll just be having maybe just a single finger or two through the loops. She comes into the halt, not quite square. Was just dragging a little in that, not picking up his feet so much, but again, clear step shown. And I think, you know, gold or silver or bronze, I think Great Britain are you know, almost certain to win a medal tonight. It will still be a fantastic achievement, even if the run, the unbeaten run is broken, because the team athletes here in Tokyo are all on relatively new horses. That's it. Some riders have had to change their horses. The, the delay in the games meant that their, their best horses are not quite coming into this as they wanted, so they've had to source new horses others it's really helped they've had more time to gel as a partnership for the younger horses but again just look at that for expression there judges looking for the rhythm the regularity and making full use of the corners of the arena to set up the movements into this sequence of walk movements. Again, Sophie electing to stretch forward to give the length of rein to let the neck stretch forward in this extended walk as the horse's hind feet step even further clear of the imprints of the front feet. Again, back up into that collected trot, setting him up for the turn. Again, setting up here for this turn on, sorry, not turn on the horn, just here, the walk pirouette here. So the tighter circle. Again, a series of movements worth a double coefficient. Lovely transition up into the collected counter and again the grade fives showing the full range of movements collected mediums and extended
Lovely and straight there, clear transitions. It just is looking for the balance, the tempo and the rhythm. And again, there's a test of suppleness here in the counter counter. Coming into this simple change with double coefficients. Good steps shown. Did you see how they're guarding the quarters there, making sure she kept the straightness. Getting preparation for this extended counter. Sophie, one of the ones who often is very, very bold in her extended. Just getting it back a little bit more now. Again, the balance, the jump in the counter. Oh, unfortunately, a change there. She'll quickly settle him back. Get that left counter again. Important to be back on that correct lead rein, lead leg to get the marks and the simple change. So we talk about the leg lead as you just watch the canter there. It looks like that inside foreleg of the horse is just leading all the way. It lands further forward than the other front leg each time, just showing that inside balance. Again here, judge is looking for the regularity, the elasticity of the pace, the balance and the engagement of the hindquarters. Good transition back. She comes into her final halt. Look at that for a beautiful square halt. Sophie Wells completes her test with Don Cara M. We'll remain to see where that is going to put them. But what is so fascinating is that the judges now, they have a really difficult job. They've already given the mark for it. But if you can imagine going back to that moment when there was that little error in the counter canter, they have to give a mark for the whole counter canter. They have to look at the overall quality and yet still incorporate into their judging that error. And when it's such good quality, how much can the error count against you? How much must they count her down? And with the scores so close, it really is all to play for. That may just have opened the door, but my goodness, I say win, lose or draw, Britain can be incredibly proud of pushing the challenge to a much more familiar Dutch team. And again, just some super highlights here, the expression and the quality of the trot. They just see the loop handholds that Sophie uses. So we were basing this on 73.9, about 74%, pretty much what she scored in the individual. Sophie Wells, we'll see the score come in and then we will know exactly what the Netherlands and to an extent the United States of America have to do. But Great Britain, before we had the first horse down the center line, we were predicting bronze for them. After their first two riders, they moved up and up into potentially gold position and 74.930, that is 1% over prediction, puts Great Britain on 229.1. And that leaves a decent job of work to be done by the final Dutch rider and the final US rider to take gold away from Great Britain. That is their challenge done. The marker is laid down and it's for everyone else to try and surpass it. 229 points across three riders for Great Britain. Of the teams that have completed three riders, Italy, Canada, RPC, Ireland. These other scores coming through. 
uh, still have a couple of riders to come in. But after grade five, that is where they sit. We have uh, USA, Germany, Austria, Japan, Netherlands, France, Denmark, Australia and Belgium still to show us their final rider. They will be coming up in grade four. Here now you see that the United States of America are seventh best because they have only seen two riders. We are predicting them to be one of our podium teams. Denmark, they could be a podium team as well. They're incredibly close. Netherlands, they are the biggest challengers to Great Britain. Indeed, when we came into this, the Netherlands and Great Britain were challengers to the United States of America. So don't rule the US out. They could come back with a big score in the next grade as well. Well, not long to go until we know the results of this team championship in Paralympic dressage. Grade four coming up from the Baji Cohen Equestrian Park very shortly.
Welcome back to Equestrian Park, and we are about to welcome forward our final grade of riders, grade four, for the dressage team test. 15 teams lining out. We have uh, just over one third of them have finished their campaign across the earlier grades, but it is going to be eight teams that find their final score as a result of the riders coming up in this next grade. Again, towards the top end of uh, our grading system, so amongst the least disabilities and impairments, Kate Shoemaker is going to come forward for the USA, hoping to put them on the podium. We have Germany, Austria, Japan. For the Netherlands, Sanne Wurtz. For France, Vladimir Vinchon. Suzanne Jensby Sunison for Denmark and Manon Claes for Belgium. Denmark and Belgium are the two real challengers behind the Netherlands and the USA. Netherlands and USA, we predict podium finishes for them. And Great Britain, leaders at the moment after all three of their riders on 229.1. Putting together those percentages for their three riders. So 229.1 out of a maximum of 300 for Great Britain. Using predicted scores, we would see Netherlands maybe take silver, USA taking bronze, but it is incredibly close. It just takes one great test to really shuffle the deck of those teams on the podium here. And we've got some really excellent scores coming up, including all of our medalists from grade four. When we had the individual here a couple of days ago at these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Around the arena, five judges keeping watch on absolutely every aspect of this set test written, written specifically for riders categorized as a result of their disabilities and impairments into grade four. And we are looking not about disability or impairment. We are looking for these riders to produce for the level that is set for them, dressage, training of the horse to the highest level possible. And that is all the judges are looking for. They're just looking for the horse to go in that happy, harmonious fashion, showing the exercises that have been set, showing the accuracy, showing the quality of the transitions between paces and the quality of the movements and figures that have been directed by the set test. While well, joining two veterans on the US team is Paralympic debutante. Kate Shoemaker. Kate, who's a veterinary surgeon at Velocity Equine Sports Medicine in Wellington, Florida. Kate has white matter lesions from periventricular ischemia, which causes motor control dysfunction, motor weakness and spasms on the right side of her body. So the final US rider, Kate, scored 70.8% in her individual test and will be back for the freestyle final as well. But now a strong performance from her here will nail down a US team medal the question is, what color? Kate comes into the shoulder in. A little bit of variation there. Started off with quite a big angle and then settled into more of the correct 30 degree angle. Judge is looking for. Onto the serpentine. Three equal look, sorry, equal loops. Judge is looking for the change of bend over the center line, just a marginal change of bend. Looking for suppleness, rhythm. And they're preparing in the corner for the medium trot. Loss of rhythm just there, but she still has time to show some good steps. Transitions at E and M marked separately into that circle and that 10 meter circle setting up nicely again for the shoulder in much more consistent on this rain she 
comes into the halt. Just almost square there. Looking for four steps back exactly for the judges and nominating. And then into the medium walk. Judges looking for the rhythm and the activity, the four beat rhythm of the walk. Good, consistent contact there. Again, they're looking for regularity of the pace, suppleness over the horse's back. She prepares into that turn on the haunches. So this one, if you're watching there with the grade fives, it's a much smaller circle that's prescribed with the hind feet. Here in the turn on the haunches, the horses can make a bigger half circle there. And here this is the extended walk. So the rider's not giving the full length of rein, but still keeping a contact with the horse's mouth. So still having communication with the horse's mouth there. As she picks her back up into the medium walk. Again, the turn on the haunches there. You can see good, clear, rhythmical steps. I was just anticipating transition there at V, thinking counter. And again here, going to perform a loop. So on to the center line, just touching, and then back to the start of counter, counter. Looking for the balance and the regularity and the quality of the counter and the shape of the loop. And again here, showing collected counter. The judge is asking the grade three, four riders now for a true collection. And now the medium counter circle. a test, the control and coming back to the collector counter at P. Judge is looking for a good, clear three beat rhythm in the counter. They're good shape. Almost just losing a bit of impulsion at times. I just feel, just pick it up a little bit. There we go. The loop that she's just shown with double coefficients, double marks. And again, really nice change of rein through trot, three to five strides required. And again, from the collector counter into the medium counter, so the judge is wanting to see a definite change to the length and strides. Maintaining the rhythm. And a forwards downward transition into trot on the centre line. Super straight. Final US rider. He says she works a lot with sport horses as a vet and says that that helps her sporting endeavours enormously. But how much will it help the US challenge here? for a podium placing as a team to go with the gold medal won by Roxy Trunnell earlier on in the individual USA's first gold medal in 25 years in Paralympic dressage. And again, with the muscle weakness that she has on her leg, I don't know if the close-up will show, she's just got some clips on the stirrups there, just some safety clips, helps prevent the foot sliding through the stirrup, helps her keep her balance there keeps the foot in balance on the stirrup. We say Kate making her Paralympic debut. And hoping to ride that wave of uh, expectation that we've had around the US team at these games that they would be taking a team medal. Judges just working through their final couple of scores, including those collective marks, those sort of 
four areas of overall impression. And Kate is going to score 71.9. So that is a uh, good improvement for her, 71.9. And uh, in terms of the team, that is going to put them right in touch. They'll be second best team at the moment behind Great Britain. And on our prediction, that should keep them in touch for a team medal. But certainly our riders, our supporters from Great Britain can breathe easy because the United States of America have not overtaken Great Britain after three riders. And now we wait and see what the Netherlands can achieve. Before that, though, it is going to be Saskia Deutz. Saskia, who is a finisher just outside the top five in the individual test here at these games, with Soyala scoring over 70% in the individual test. Saskia, who has spinal cord injuries, which results in incomplete paraplegia, putting her into our grade four of classification. Saskia using two sticks here to back up her legs if she needs that, but also just carrying them at the shoulder so she can influence the shoulder at times. Super angle there. shoulder and just lost it stride at the end and again such an expressive mare this she comes in for this serpentine judges looking for the straightness across that center line looking for the frame and the balance to stay the same through those changes of direction. Setting up for the medium trot going deep into the corner. Could maybe be a little bit more rhythmical, but again, the judges will be looking at the overall impression, looking at the harmony as well. Again, using the circle to set the shoulder in up. Maybe a little on four tracks, but they're correcting back onto the three again. Also nearly squared up into a square halt there. Just slightly missed, but again, good steps back and again, looking for the exact number of four. Judge is always very particular on that. Again, medium walk here. Preparing for the turn on the haunches, just taking a little bend to the left, asking the mare to come round. Those hind feet picking up and stepping down. Just looking for the clear four beat rhythm. She lets her stretch forward into the extended walk. Looking for maximum over track in the walk. And again, preparing for this turn on the haunches. Again, a nice circle was Maybe just a touch stepping out there at the end, but good steps. And again, those were good transitions. Some of the horses anticipating a canter at V and not the trot that's prescribed by the test. Balance counter, the change of direction. Super rhythm. of the corner. Again, coming in to set up this change. A little bit shorter of the prescribed number of steps. So the judge is looking for three to five trot strides, but again, we're looking at just marginal differences here. 
And as we've, you know, touched on several times over the course of the Paralympic Games so far, a lot of the time in dressage in horse sports, you're riding the horse you're on, and rather than picking a fight and saying, I really need you to hold for five steps, you'll just go quickly through that transition because overall it's going to mean you lose less marks. Very much so. It's always a balance of things, especially in a situation like this. You know, you're under the lights. You might not have so many people there, but there's still a huge atmosphere out there. Judges again, looking at the, the harmony between horse and rider. The music in this team tester music is not being judged. As she comes up for this, they're much better transition more walk, uh, sorry more trot strides again keeping the straightness there in the counter I think to gain top marks in this count here they're just uh, again maybe that's why she's not going for the the more sort of bigger medium trot stride because a uh, counter stride because the mare would have just had a bit of tension in there And this now coming onto the center line and the counter, a real test of the riders keeping their horses straight. There into the halt. So Saskia Deutz and Soyala completing their test and completing the German team challenge. Germany have fallen a little bit off the pace. We expect them maybe to finish outside the top half dozen when we have all the scores to hand. And for that to be the case, we will expect to see them come up as our third best team when we have the score in just a moment. And again, lots of activity in here. The horses, again, in this grade, you know, such quality. But of course, with the quality for powers, we want the temperament as well and a lot of these riders have spent uh, quite a bit of time on the preparation here isn't it the heat training acclimatizing themselves acclimatizing the horses and i know a lot of the the nordic countries have actually moved exercise bicycles into the saunas you know just to get the heat so they can they can feel that and what the atmosphere would be like here Saskia, you see, just glancing up towards the screen. That's where she will first find out her score. Her successor, I think, already in, working up around the ring, Saskia Deutz and Soyala. They will score 71.475, giving Germany a score of 215 as a team. That is... Very, very consistent from Germany on what we expected. They are our third best team at the moment, with Great Britain and the USA team scores completed, holding the top two spots. Final team rider for Austria is going to be Bernd Brugger, Bernd with Bellagio, a world and European championships level rider making his Paralympic debut. Bernd broke his neck in 2012 after a horse accident. His arms and legs were paralyzed and doctors told him he would require a wheelchair for the rest of his life. But determined to get back riding, following surgery, he took on three full months of rehabilita rehabilitation and he was able to take his first steps with a walker within three months of his operation. Again, by just using his weight and his balance there to direct the horse. And again, just having to momentarily gather up the reins. He's not opting to use any loops to aid keeping those reins. So now in the serpentine a very, very forward collected trot. Horse very much looking forward. 
an interesting thing you'll, you'll see the judges will be looking at is sometimes if you have a difference in your arms, the strength in your arms, you can sometimes create a tilt in the horse's head. And we see that a little bit here. So the judges will be looking at that. They'll be taking that into consideration in the final marks as well as maybe each movement. It comes in onto the shoulder in. And judges looking for the rhythm through the transitions there. Good hold there, but the horse just thinking forwards instead of back, but good steps back once in the rein back, good steps back. And again, in the walk, looking for clear four beat rhythm and the relaxation. This the medium walk. to collect up a little for this part. It's so easy to keep saying the pirouette and the turn on the haunches. So the turn on the haunches, the, the little bit bigger, the bigger circle that you can describe with the hind feet. And again, into a lovely extended walk. You see the clear over track and the hind feet over the imprints of the forefeet. Bent in common with Austrian Olympian in dressage, Florian Bacher, trained initially at the Spanish Riding School in Vienna, that real heartland of very, very traditional and high-level dressage training. Into the trot again, the horse just anticipating a walk to counter transition there into the counter. And that's the thing, sometimes when you're, you know, if you're out competing at the higher levels in non-disabled sport than the horses, and they come back to the power, and sometimes just do that overcompensation on the aids. And again, that uh, loop with double marks. And again, here looking for lovely transition through there for burned. Very straight there in the counter. And again, it's a lovely medium counter, the horse just stretching out the lengthening of the stride there. And then we'll look for the collection so we have the difference to show the judge to gain sort of top marks. Again, back into the second loop. So the judge is looking for the balance, the consistency. Don't want to see a change in the rhythm. Very beautifully done. And again, in this change, we don't want to see a change in the, the frame of the horse, the, the, the head and the neck. Nicely balanced. And again, very straight there. Slight head chop creeping in a little bit in the counter, the circle. But again, that's only momentarily. It's not affecting everything there. On to the center line. And a good forward transition down into the trot. Not quite squaring up there, but a good harmonious test. Final team rider for Austria is going to be Bert Brugger. Austria have the chance to overtake Germany here in terms of team scores. Germany on 215.0. And if Bert Brugger can replicate the 66.9 that he scored in the individual or indeed improve on it, they should be able to overtake Germany in the final analysis. That's in our riders here having the choice of riding in a double bridle or a snaffle bridle, so one bit or two bits in the mouth, depending on what best suits the horse's way of going and the rider. And again, a very happy pair of athletes. So Austria's Bernd Brugge 
hoping to put Austria into the eventual top six and also overtake Germany. They need a team total of better than 215.0 to do that. So Austria, 2-1-3, they're going to just be overtaken by Germany. 65.975 is the score for Bernd Brugge. And Austria are our fifth best team, sitting also behind Italy on that score of 2-1-3. So between Italy and Canada on our leaderboard, Austria's 2-1-3.527 final score. But you can see just how close it all is that... Uh, a couple of percent one way or the other. They'd hoped to finish in front of Germany in about sixth position. Now they're overtaken by about two places and will probably end up seventh or eighth in the final analysis. Final Japanese rider is Katsuji Takajima. Katsuji, World Equestrian Games rider for Japan in 2018 comes to his first Paralympics. It's been great to have this team here riding so well as well for Japan. They have all uh, comfortably scored well over 66%. On average, we've had a 65 from the first rider, Matsuhide Miyagi. We had an over 70% from Sho Inaba. And Matsuhide will be back for the freestyle final as well, which is also great to have a freestyle finalist for the home nation. But Katsuji with Uzet, who will be their final team rider. Katsuji, who has paralysis on the right side of his body, sustained a brain injury during an equestrian event in February 2013. And started competing in para-sport in 2015. I think there are so many stories of riders who become injured that come then into the para sport that might make it seem like the door is closed. It's it's not, is it? It's not. It's just the beginning of a whole new career, in but, a but, sense. But, there are but so not many just that. I mean, that. But it, it feels like maybe that's the only way of accessing the sport, and it's not. I mean, it's you don't no. have to have been a rider um, to, to access this sport. Not at all. Yes, it's going to take, you know, it takes everyone sort of, you know, three to five years to get up to this kind of level from the beginning. But again, super shoulder in there, good angle, good balance. But no, it's, it's open to anyone. And we have a lot of um, sportsmen and women coming in from different sports. Just a shame, they just lost the balance, the horse anticipating. But again, a real quality, lovely horse. Again, listening to his rider, the ears just flicking back, checking in, listening, waiting for the instructions to come across to this medium trot. Again, the judge is looking for good balance, good rhythm, lengthening of the frame. Circle then into the shoulder in. Okay, just a bit of a varying angle on this one. Again, but it could be because of the, the weakness down on that right side, not being able to hold the angle. Good immobility, not quite square, but good immobility. Good steps. Correct number. As we say, the judges set these things for riders, whether it's three to five steps or that's five steps, they're looking for you to stay within those boundaries. And the medium walk, and then just setting up. But let's turn on the haunches. Just sticking there a little bit. One hind foot not picking up. Looking for a good marching rhythm, even though we're on that little tight, tiny circle. 
still looking for good rhythm. So she be using, leaning forward to gain the extended walk rather than slipping the range of the fingers. Obviously has a little bit of a problem with that side, picking the reins back up. So again, it's all acceptable. Everyone works at their own way of achieving the movements that are required. It's not one size fits all. Again, good transition there. And then up into the counter, really accurate. Good balance and rhythm just on the diagonal line. Just losing the forward momentum there as to change the balance. And again, this is what this movement is designed to highlight. This is why the judges use this movement because it just shows, it just, if they're not quite so forward, not quite so forward, then it will highlight that. Good trot strides and then up into the counter. And again, the weakness on that side, just showing up. And the horses, they just know this one. We haven't quite got that strength and balance in there. But again, doing really well to keep that contained. And then back onto this loop. Again, this worth double marks. They're much more balanced this way. And again, as a rider, if you've got more strength on this side to keep that uh, balance and straight, this certainly helps you. Again, the prescribed number of steps, really good transition upwards. Lovely and straight there into this medium counter. Just see, can he bring the horse back? Yes, very good. So it's like if you get too much forward momentum and then it can be a little bit harder to bring the horses back. And again, just unfortunate being unable to keep the horse quite straight there, but again, into a good halt as the horse squares himself up. Final Japanese rider, Katsuji Takashima. Is not the final Japanese rider of the Games, though, because Matsuhide Miyagi will be riding freestyle tomorrow. But Katsuji will finish up the Japanese team challenge. And a little bit of a uh, battle between them and Singapore. For the score, Singapore in the clubhouse after day one on 200.7 after all three riders. Japan could finish just a shade in front of that. And I think some of these movements are just showing up that when, when you have that weakness in your body, it can really affect how you can keep the horse sort of balanced and straight. So we we'll see where Japan are going to feature on our leaderboard, Katsuji. Looking at about 65.2 predicted score, which would put Japan just in front of Singapore in the final analysis. 200.7 is the score for Singapore, unfortunately, not quite there today for Katsuji. 62.125, a team total of 197. The rider who took the individual gold here on her first day of competition in grade four. She was the freestyle gold medalist from the Rio Pan Pan Paralympic Games. Sanna votes. Sanna will be the final rider for the Netherlands with Demontur. And Sanna, 76.2 is our prediction for her. 
in line with her gold medal winning score from the other day. But if she can exceed that, the Netherlands might be just able to overtake Great Britain and add the Paralympic team title to their recently won world and European title as a nation. Sanan Demonter just moving off into the collected trot. A really well honed partnership. And of course, the judges looking at the harmony between horse and rider. She comes here into the medium trot. Clear transitions shown. The circle, using the circle to set that up for the shoulder in. Quite a bit of an angle there. Almost on four tracks. And again, these are transitions just at H and B worth 10 marks alone. Serpentine judges looking for three equal loops for the balance. She comes in using the corner to set him up for the medium trot. And again, having to balance the horse coming back to the M from the medium into that circle straight away. Better angle this way. Again, that shoulder in worth double marks. Very good, squaring up nicely. And the steps back. Again, judges looking, they're not sort of judging the music here. Riders have provided their own music, hoping to sort of complement their performance, but it's more for the benefit of making this a more sort of viewable program. So it's not being judged here. That comes in in the freestyle to music. Good turn on the haunches and then just Slipping her reins through her finger so she can let Demonte just stretch out. Just, only just over tracking. There it goes, a little bit more there. But again, good stretch. The nose dropping, lengthening over the back. And again, just picking up into the collected walk. Ready for this turn on the haunches. Again, clear step shown. Sana, who does a lot of work as a reporter, she actually covers quite a lot of dressage and para dressage competitions. And as a, an editor, was born with a condition that affected her joints and weakened both of her legs, which was exacerbated in 2001 when she had a riding accident, which affected the mobility of both of her legs after that. And again, this a real balancing movement, testing the horse and rider worth double marks. Judges looking for the regularity and quality of the counter. She comes in for this change through the trot. And a good smooth fluent change. And then medium counter. Showing good length. Lengthening in the strides there. And then the transition back to the collected counter. Very straight. And again, in this change of rain, judges wanting to see no, oh sorry, there's a loop. Really apologize there. The loop, the beginnings of counter counter. So looking for the horse to keep its fluidity and balance. And now as we set up into the change through trot, 
three to five trot strides required. I don't know if she had any worries about that, but when she got that change, this huge smile came across her face. I get a real harmonious picture. That's what para dressage is all about, the harmony, the partnership between horse and rider. Just a bit of loss of straightness there, but minor really. Very forward into the counter halt transition and a good square halt. Well done, Sanna Wurtz for the Netherlands on course to achieve that rarest of things, the triple-triple. She won the two individual medals at the World Championships, the two individual medals at the most recent European Championships, and Netherlands were team champions at both of those events. She has already won one individual title here in Tokyo. Has she ridden positively and strongly enough now to put the Netherlands out in front of the team competition, leaving her then with just the free freestyle gold to pick up to seal the deal? Again, just like it was for Great Britain, win, lose or draw, to finish on the podium at any championships is special, at the Paralympic Games is beyond. The USA, I think, are comfortably there. Great Britain are comfortably there. The Netherlands are pretty comfortably there. But it is which colour of medal they will be hanging around their necks in just a short while. The victory ceremony for the team championships coming up at the end of this grade. Well, we're just hearing Gareth Jenkins, the arena announcer, they're giving us 229.2. Remember, 229.9 for Great Britain. The Netherlands haven't quite done it, but Sanna, my goodness, 78.2. She very nearly couldn't have done much more. Fantastic score. And we will remember also that is provisional. It could be graded upwards when we take in all the paper scores and check and double check them. Frank Hoswell went up from a 74.0 to a 74.8 upon confirmation. So it's not necessarily over yet, but it does look like Britain maintain their unbeaten run uh, by only 0.7 of a percent across three riders. Unbelievably close. There we have... Vladimir Vinchon on this very elegant, expressive horse. Yeah, Vladimir with Fidetans for Rosie. Vladimir unfortunately missed out on a place in the freestyle. He finished ninth in his grade, grade four, but scored 68.9. Just a super flowing medium trot there. And again, just the rhythm and balance there on that circle, just lovely to see into the shoulder and you just see using the stick there to act for that missing right leg and so he would have trained with the mare just to achieve that Vladimir again was a rider he worked in racing he'd actually just ridden a winner at a race in Belgium the day before the car accident in September 1994 that resulted in his right leg being amputated he's actually competed quite a lot in wheelchair basketball before and I, I love it. He said, that gave me the courage to try para show jumping, which gave me the courage to try para dressage. That sounds like entirely the wrong way around through that path to me. Totally, totally. And again, it's interesting. Riders who choose to ride with prosthetics, those who choose to ride without. And again, using the rising trot there on the circle just to keep the momentum. Maybe a little bit too much angle there. And that's sort of almost on a... A parallel line. Oh, super, just squaring up nicely. Two, three, four, four clear steps shown. Exactly what the judges are looking for. And again, such a lovely, relaxed picture. 
And again, just straightening himself up. Again, the judges in the walk will be looking for clear four beat rhythm, regularity of the pace. And very, very uh, patriotic music. And again, the music not being judged here. It's just an accompaniment. But just look at the overtrack in this extended walk there. Just super, the length of stride. The French have actually all brought the same music. It might be arranged slightly differently, but we've heard the same motifs um, for each of the French team riders. Jean-Gatrian at the moment. Again, good transitions there. The uh, into the trot, the counter just a little bit elevated there. But again, super balance through that loop. Again, the, the loop with double marks. As we come through, let's see the balance through there. Lovely. No movement in the head and neck as you came down in the transition and then back up to the counter. The medium, the lengthening of the stride. And let's see the transition back. That's what the judges want to see. Yeah, super. using the corner set up for the next movement. Again, the balance there, the change of direction. And the horse always just keeping a little ear back on his rider. Again, just smooth, harmonious. And again, correction there on the straightness. Again, opening the frame, the medium counter. And let's see him bring him back. Again, the judge is looking for the clear three beat rhythm of the counter. Very straight onto the center line there. And lovely forwards into the trot. As we come into the final halt, he's delighted. Bravo indeed for the final French rider of the team championships, Vladimir Vinchon and Fide Tanz for Rosie. We will see his teammate Chiara Zanati tomorrow in the grade three freestyle. And see where France can end up on our leaderboard. Just super expressive trot there. The elevation gained. Again, Vladimir using a, a neck strap. It's allowed in our para dressage. So not an extra, the breastplate. It's very much allowed. And it's just super to see the partnership, the harmony. Vladimir, who was a 2012 Paralympian, missed out on the Rio Games, but back now for Tokyo 2021. And has he done enough to just put France above Germany? And I just love pointing the horse. This is all about the horse, the partnership. You know, we as riders couldn't do this without our companions there. So Fida Tanz for Rosie, Vladimir Vinchon. Germany on 215.0 and France have overtaken them. 216.0 for France as Vladimir Vinchon contributes 71.3% to the team score. So no sign of any update to the score for Sanovertz. And Demontur still sitting on our screens at 78.2. And therefore, it's looking more and more likely that Great Britain have taken team gold here tonight in Baji Cohen with those 
relatively new combinations, three experienced riders on the team, no doubt about that, but all bringing relatively fresh horses to Tokyo in terms of the recent championship years. So we go on to Denmark. Denmark are the real challenger team. They sit in a predicted fourth place position, but they are so close on prediction to the score in the clubhouse for the United States of America. Suzanne Jensby Sunderson and Leeds, her homebred horse, will go last for Denmark. They scored 71.9 in the individual and they need 72.279 here to overtake USA for bronze. And that is very, very achievable. So we'll be watching closely for a clear round from Suzanne in her third Olympic Games. She was the individual silver medalist in her grade in Rio. Just a little speak there, but she'll be working quickly to settle him down into that medium trot and then straight into the 10 meter circle. So again, you have to really collect the horse back, that change of direction, etc. And then the circle leading in to the shoulder in. Good angle. Into the serpentine again, looking for the three clear loops. Just remember the shoulder ends, they are worth double marks. This serpentine, just the single. All three loops just coming under the 10 marks. Again, the judge is looking for even, balanced loops. And back into this short diagonal. The medium trot, looking for the rhythm, the engagement of the quarters, the hind end. Back into this very accurate circle. Back and then three, clear traction. Just a little waver there, coming in. Again, using the corner to set up for this halt, super halt two, three, four steps and forwards into that medium walk. And that's what they're looking for, the forwards momentum. And the four beat rhythm and the suppleness of the horse's back in the walk. Preparing for this turn on the haunches Really good, clear steps there. And they're just looking for a diagonal line back. And they're not looking for you to do almost like a leg yield back. Some horses wanting you to just gradually drift back. And again, a good length of stride shown here. The horse stretching forward. In this walk and just carefully picking him up, preparing again, setting up the bend turn into this, turn on the haunches, just a little stepping out there, but again, good steps. And you're always just looking for that regularity, that fluency, when you see that moment of a little bit of break in rhythm as she was coming around the turn in the haunches, that is something that the judges will be straight in on. Absolutely. And again, into this double coefficient now on this loop for the balance and the jump in the can to the tempo and again very rhythmical just a little backwards there going I know we say it seems silly to say backwards going forwards but just not the fluidity again, very straight there okay length and stride medium counter really showing the difference here. It's maybe just bearing down a little, but she'll soon pick him back up into the collected. There we go. And Suzanne with the weakness in both legs, 
opting to carry both sticks. Get back onto this balance loop again with double marks. And again, this one of several homebred horses taking part in these Paralympic Games. Yeah, we flagged up uh, this horse Leeds a couple of times, but I keep forgetting to mention that Lee Pearson's is homebred. Yeah, maybe we'd have liked to have seen a, a, a few more steps there in that. But again, you, you look at the, the balance of the horse and whether it's better to opt for the less strides and getting a good, clean transition. She's certainly going for the medium counter there. Let's see, can she get the balance back? to make a clean transition to the collected counter. And again, good balance down to that. So many, horse, so many riders struggle with that turn onto the center line in the counter. Into the halt, she'll be delighted. So remember, we need in the order of 72.3 from this final Danish rider to put them onto the podium. It is very possible. Suzanne Jens B. Sunison scored 71.9 in the individual test here. Already at these Tokyo Games, and so many horse and rider combinations have come back for their second day of riding for this team test and really found their groove. And again, Suzanne, it looks like maybe she's got magnetic uh, stirrups. So again, with the weakness in the legs, that just allows her to, she doesn't have to worry about keeping her stirrups and obviously they would, they would easily come away if she had any unforeseen sort of thing happen, but it can just give you peace of mind as a rider that you're not having to fight for those stirrups to keep your place. So 224.3 is the US team score. Suzanne Jens B. Sunison and Leeds completing the Danish team challenge. And it has been a challenge. They have been knocking on the door right the way through. They've always been predicted to be one of our top teams, and it's always been so close. 224.3. Oh, it is so close. 224.352 for the USA. 224.324 for Denmark. They are going to finish in fourth place, but it literally could not be closer between the USA and Denmark. What is it going to be there? It's um, 0 0.028. So Denmark, a valiant effort. Suzanne Jens, Sunison and Leeds. They will finish, by our reckoning, in fourth place, unless they can be overtaken by Belgium, who we will see at the end of the draw at the moment looking to finish their campaign and see whether they can break into the top 10 is Australia. Australia has Sharon Jarvis riding the anchor leg with Romanos. 68.3 in the individual for Sharon, who's been taking a lot of uh, coaching courses, including in uh, to the undergraduate level, thinking about life after the sport, after these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Sharon was given actually months to live after she was diagnosed with bone cancer in her left leg at the age of seven. But she had 12 months of chemotherapy and radiotherapy to make a full recovery. But then subsequently has broken the leg no less than three times. Most recently having a 30 centimeter rod put in her leg. She's had a number of operations and bone grafts been left with limited movement and strength from the waist down, particularly on that left side of her body. And that's why she would be using two sticks, just supplementing the aids. And her medium trot, going for very bold music as her accompaniment, and again, the music not being judged here in these tests. Super rhythm, super bend through that circle. Good angle. And there you see the straightening, finishing the movement at F. And again, the quality of these horses would be the envy of any dressage rider anywhere in the world. 
and judges looking for the regularity, the rhythm, the shape, the size of the loops, the evenness. And I get a lovely frame here. Judge is looking for the pole, the point between the horse's ears to be the highest point. Now just dropping down there and hence dropping onto his forehand, losing the rhythm there. So she will unfortunately lose a few marks there. But again, there are plenty of places to pick up the marks. Again, back into the good carriage again. Quite a bit of angle there, a little varying. That's a double coefficient on that one. But again, super hot, just look at that. Oh, very tentative there, just started the movement, not in a diagonal pair, but then completed that really well. And here in the medium walk. Just preparing now to come in just in a, we call a shoulder four. So the, the shoulder just leading slightly in preparation for this turn on the haunches, wanting the good, clean steps. Quite a tight one. If, if it's done correctly, the judges will accept that more as a prep, but again, looking for a little bit more rhythm. And again, settling in to the extended walk there just Again, we'll be looking for a little bit more freedom and through that to gain the top marks. But still a different shown. Again, I think we can see on here, this is how you really want to be setting up that angle. Again, a little bit tight. And maybe the rhythm, lacking a little bit of the, the, the four beat rhythm there. Yeah, I mean, even just the casual observer, you always just want to walk. You think, gosh, if, you know, back in the day, if you had to walk to the shops on this horse, you want to get there before lunchtime, don't you? And again, into this double coefficient loop, looking for the balance. Very good. Lots of jump in this counter. The lift, how much it's coming off the ground. Very clear. Three beats. Just super soft, rhythmical. Could maybe just be a little bit forwards, more in that transition, but again, good steps. A lovely difference there. Was just, there, that's better, now forwards. And is he going to drop down a bit? Nope, that's it, picked up well. Very straight there. And again, very topical music for Australia. The horse just decided to snort, not really helping her, just losing the balance as he's doing that. But again, don't forget the music not being judged here. Again, very straight, using every part of the arena. Just dipping down, and again, maybe she's opted to do just the one stride instead of the three to five walk, trot strides that are asked for there. Again, clear forwards movement. Very good, back to the collected, very straight. Let's see the turn down the center. Could be a little bit straighter, but straightened up now. Very good. Very expressive trot toward the end there. Squaring up into the halt there. Well, Sharon Jarvis completes the campaign for the land down under of Australia with Romanos. Australia just hoping to stay in front of the Russian Paralympic Committee. 208.233 for them. Australia with the chance of just staying in front, and that relies on about a 69.7 or better for Sharon Jarvis. Again, 
some super, oh, just picking the moment there where he chose to snort. But again, super partnership. They say even if she does retire as an athlete, Sharon will be putting an awful lot back into this sport as a trainer in the future and used her time in the sport to pick up a lot of coaching experience, a lot of coaching qualifications as well. And Sharon Jarvis and Romanus will score 67.9, so it's 206 for Australia. And that, in fact, will cost them two places. They will go behind both the Russian Paralympic Committee and Ireland on that 206 score. So the final horse and rider combination in the team championship is going to be the rider for Belgium. Bronze medalist in the individual on 72.8, Manon Claes and Sandior. Now, the door not totally closed for Belgium to take a medal here, but it is going to take over 75% from Manon to do it. So she really needs that, that boost that certain horse and rider combinations have had coming into the ring the second time. Paralympic Games debut with the individual bronze already for the rider coached by Michel Georges, the grade five gold medalist of these games. Has an acquired impairment, having fractured her back and breaking, th fracturing her neck and breaking three vertebrae in her back in 2007. She has nerve damage on her right side in her arm and her leg with only about 30% power on the right side of her body. On the center line, lovely, elegant, active trot. Nestring Manon, if, with the weakness of the side, not opting to use a stick with this, may have scored with one, but electing to come into the arena without. Super balanced circle. And then using the circle to set up the shoulder in. Again, all these movements flowing one to the other, used as a progression to show the horse's training and ability. Super on the center line there, very, very straight. Judges looking for that straightness, the evenness of the loops. Just lovely and flowing. the medium trot on the short diagonal. Super expressive trot there. Again, setting him back. Quite a big stride to bring back to then make the circle in the collected trot. And now into this shoulder in left. The shoulder in with double marks. Just a super elegant picture. Not quite square. Oh, not quite sure how the judges will see that. Just a, a movement again at the end when you thought she'd set the halt and got the immobility. And that is that is the implied part. It's halt and immobility every time you're asked for a halt. And that's sometimes where riders, for whatever reason, end up throwing it away. And it might be because that asking a horse to just stay and stay and stay in the halt is not going to deliver the next best movement. Sometimes it is a compromise on deciding, you know, are you going to carry out that movement to the full requirements? Again, the turn on the haunch is a little large. Again, good stretch here. Judges looking to see the neck stretching, the nose stretching out, the over track from the hind feet over the imprint of the front feet. Again, just using a little short, sorry, shoulder for setting up the steps there. Again, a little large. 
but even, of course, anticipating the transition there. Quite early, but good up into the counter. A little tension creeping in the head, just head and neck just calming up a little bit. Sets into this loop, hitting the centre line and then changing the balance with double marks. Again, the judge is looking for the three beat rhythm, the jump and the counter. A good upward transition, but the downwards just a bit tentative. Again, and can we see a difference here in the medium counter and the collected counter to earn top marks? That's it straightening him up there. this loop. There we go. Keeping the rhythm. Oh, just changing their behinds, we call it. Just change the legs. So, lost balance there, but again, it's just one mark affected. That's better again there. Compared to the earlier one. I'd just like to see him go forwards a little bit more, but again, you've got to always look at your collecting them back. Uh, let's see, can she turn down straight towards the horse? Going to be quarters in just as I thought you could just see, and again, maybe just falling there into the trot, but still a very harmonious picture between them. So Manon Claes brings our team championships to its conclusion for Belgium. Looking forward to her freestyle, having the uh, Seer tracks, titanium and cheap thrills there for her team test. Basically, I think we're going to have quite a fun freestyle from this great four rider and bronze medalist at her Paralympic debut in the individual test. Belgium. We'll just have to wait and see whether they're going to end up on the podium, but it's going to take quite a big score for Manon to get them there, just over 75%. So I think our podium is complete. It's really delighted with the horse there. And the stirrups that you see, they are safety stirrups. So they will break open if anything untoward should happen. And actually, they're not specific to para dressage. I think most of our equestrian disciplines would ride in stirrups that allow the, the foot to free itself very easily because one of the most dangerous things is if you do end up with a fall and your foot is trapped in the stirrup. So 73.8 for Manon Claes, 223.1 for Belgium, and they are the team that will finish in fifth place in the team championship at these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. So putting it all together, it is another gold medal for Great Britain in the history of the Paralympic Games with the big challenge coming from the Netherlands. And in the end, there was only 0.7 of a percent in the difference. Great Britain, Sophie Wells, who rode the final leg for them today, delivering the goods once again. And how impressive three experienced riders, but with less experienced horses putting it together for gold. The Netherlands, the reigning European and world champions, couldn't make it Paralympic champion, but a big, big score from Sanna Wurtz at the end made it incredibly close and means that she could be still winning her freestyle on a great score. And the United States of America, we were always predicting a team medal for them and they rode the tests they needed to stay there under great pressure from Denmark just off the podium, the United States of America will be team bronze medalists here in Tokyo.
Behind those three, you can see how close Denmark were. What did we work it out as? I think 0.28. Then Belgium, France, Germany, Italy. But again, 2-1-6, 2-1-5, 2-1-4, 2-1-3 on for Austria, 2-1-1 on for Canada, the leaders overnight last night. Russian Paralympic Committee, Ireland, Australia, Singapore, Japan are the rankings of our 15 teams that were qualified and competed in this team championship. Victory ceremony coming up very shortly from Equestrian Park. So the team medals have now been decided. One more day of competition coming up on day six when all five grades will ride their freestyle. Eight athletes per grade for that second set of individual medals. And we will see who will be the most successful Paralympic nation and competitor at these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. But here tonight in Equestrian Park, there's still the small matter of awarding the medals to Great Britain, the Netherlands and the United States of America in the forthcoming victory ceremony.
Welcome, you join us now for the victory ceremony here at Equestrian Park for Paralympic Team Dressage. Our presentation party of Corinne Biore, Finance Director of the International Paralympic Committee, accompanied by Kano Kanji, President of the Japan Riding Association for the Disabled. As ever, our victory ceremonies here in Equestrian Park are led in by our silver medalists. And that is the Netherlands. But huge congratulations and celebrations amongst the GB camp as they carry on their unbeaten tradition as gold medalists at every Paralympic Games since the introduction of the sport in its current format at Atlanta in 1996, 25 years ago. And also coming forward, having taken the bronze medal at these games. Two Paralympic veterans and one Paralympic debutante for the United States of America. These wonderful horses as well, standing behind the podium, but equally important to the celebrations here tonight. For the Netherlands, Rix van der Horst, Finn, Finsley, Frank Hosmars, Alphaville, Sanovotes, Demonteur. For the United States of America, America Roxy Trunnels, Dalton, Rebecca Hartz, El Corona, Texel, and Kate Shoemaker's Solitaire. And the champion horses of Great Britain, Lee Pearson's Breezer, Natasha Baker's Keystone Dawn Chorus, and Sophie Wells' Don Cara M. Accompanied by their wonderful grooms and support staff as well, these are our partners in sport, our equine athletes. So two great nations of para dressage when you look at the history of the team medals in Great Britain and the Netherlands. And for the United States of America, it is a first time on the team podium and richly deserved. They came in here forecast to be on this podium and they rode the tests necessary to stay there. Staving off the challenge of Denmark by just 0 0.038. The team made up of Roxy Trunnell from grade one. Grade one individual gold medalist, Rebecca Hart of grade three and Kate Shoemaker of grade four. Your bronze medalists in team dressage at these Paralympic Games, the United States of America. The silver medalists, and my goodness, this was close as well, just 0.656 of a percent difference between silver and, bro and gold at these games. Frank Hosma. Sanovertz and Rix van der Horst. All individual medalists in their grades, including the individual Paralympic title for Sana. Now team silver medalists incredibly close. That's Mr. Kano Kanji of the Japan RDA presents the mementos on behalf of the organizing committee of the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games Tokyo 2022 are silver medalists. Gold medalists and Paralympic champions once again, every single edition of the Games 
since 1996. The Centennial Games in Atlanta has gone to Great Britain. And one man on this team has been on plenty of these podiums before taking the gold. Accompanied by Sophie Wells and Natasha Baker, Sir Lee Pearson takes another gold in para dressage. Sophie on presenting duties presents the medal, the gold medal to Natasha Baker. There's Natasha's mum amongst the big support staff. Paralympics GB and British Equestrian do a fantastic job supporting these athletes and they've been supporting success right the way through since 1996. And Salih receives another gold medal. It's been so interesting hearing Lee Pearson being interviewed at these games about how much it still means to him. He's come here with a homebred horse in Breeza. He's come here at a different stage in his life now as a father. And he says in all of the Paralympics he's been to before, he maybe hasn't cried at his final halt. And now suddenly he finds himself welling up. And he might do so again, and deservedly so, as it's time for the national anthem of our Paralympic champions, Great Britain. Our medalists, and let's not forget there are 18 athletes on the field of play with our nine medalists here on the podium and our nine equine athletes as well. And so right that they should be brought out onto the field of play to enjoy their moment and be recognized for their key part in this wonderful, wonderful sporting endeavor. Great Britain. Netherlands, United States of America, three worthy team medalists, and amongst them, so many gold, silver, and bronze medals from the individual already at these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. And everyone we see here will be back tomorrow amongst the 40 athletes riding for the five sets of individual freestyle medals that will conclude the para dressage program at these Tokyo 2020 Games. Frank Halsmar, Sanovitz, and Rix van der Horst for the Netherlands. It was very, very close. Unfortunately, it means that Sana won't be able to achieve that triple-triple in these games. But she could still be riding for the double gold with the freestyle to come. And the team of the United States of America as well. Roxy Trunnell, the grade one Paralympic champion. USA's first gold medal in 25 years in para dressage. Rebecca Hart and Kate Shoemaker teaming up with Roxy then for the team, giving the USA their first ever para dressage team medal. And there are USA's three lovely horses. You might feel we're saying it a lot, but the quality of the horses is just incredible, and it makes a sport that has already been such a pleasure to watch, an inspiration to watch, just move up into a whole other gear here in Tokyo 2020.
specially commissioned victory bouquets first time we've had victory bouquets since london 2012 the nippon flower council working producing 5,000 bouquets for each of the games there's great symbolism to the way the flowers are arranged as well the central flower is a tokyo rose in the color of the paralympic games but then surrounding it another set of flowers talking about the support team that surrounds each one of our paralympic athletes Great accessibility features as well in the medals for the first time. They have uh, markings on the edge for the visually impaired so they can directly identify a gold, silver or bronze. There are also strands in the ribbon that produce a raised feeling again so that the medal can be identified as gold, silver or bronze. But the important thing about recognizing with these medals is recognizing the sporting endeavor, and we have done that in no small part. Gold, silver, and bronze richly won a huge challenge from Denmark and Belgium as well in the fourth and fifth place. It was very close. It was an incredible team championship, and we can't wait to watch the individual freestyle that will bring the program of sport for this Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games equestrian dressage to its conclusion on day six of the Games.
So that concludes day five action here at Equestrian Park with a historic victory for Great Britain, continuing their unbeaten run in Paralympic dressage, going back to Atlanta in 1996. But my goodness, the challenge was strong. All five grades bring forward eight athletes tomorrow for the Freestyle to Music that will conclude the sport program here at Equestrian Park for these Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games.